Hello, we are going to work on the sum and difference formulas for the different trigonometric functions. To do this, let's first consider the case of the sine of 60 degrees. From the unit circle, we know that the sine of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Well, then if we took the sine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 30 degrees, shouldn't that equal the sine of 60 degrees? From the unit circle, again, we know that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. If we take a half plus a half, we get 1. But 1 does not equal the square root of 3 over 2. How can we then come up with an expression using sums or differences to find values that we want to know? I'm going to draw an image on the unit circle to explain how we can come up with these different formulas and prove them for you. All right, in this figure here on the unit circle where the x is the cosine component and the y is the sine component, I have this point at 1, 0. And then I'm going to use that to let me know, A, this is on the unit circle. But then I have these points, P and Q. P is where we have cosine of u and sine of u. Q is cosine of v, sine of v. Can we calculate the cosine of u minus v? It should be noted that u and v are both positive and their difference is also positive. I've drawn a new circle where I've got the point R now, that is the cosine of u minus v and sine u minus v for the x and y components. And I'd like to point out that the arc length between P and Q and the arc length between R and S are the same length. And because the arcs are the same length, then the um, chords are gonna be the same length. And I'm going to use the distance formula then between the two of them to try and find a formula for the cosine of u minus v. For the circle on the left, the distance between p and q is found by taking the difference in the x's squared plus the difference in the y's squared, square rooted. Same thing for the r and s on the right-hand circle. So the, on the distance between p and q, we've got the cosine of u minus the cosine of v squared plus the sine of u minus the sine of v squared, square rooted. That's equal to the circle on the right, the square root of the r point, which is cosine of u minus v, minus the s point, which is 1 squared, plus the r point, sine of u minus v, minus the s point, 0 squared. Now what I can do is I can expand using algebra, I can expand these squared terms. I'm going to separate them into left-hand side and right-hand side for work, just to work strictly with the left-hand side and then strictly with the right-hand side. When I expand this, I have the cosine squared of u minus 2 cosine u cosine v plus cosine squared of v plus sine squared of u minus 2 sine u sine v plus sine squared of v. And because I have some squared components, remember that the cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x is equal to 1. So I can match up some of these terms. The cosine squared of u plus the sine squared of u is 1, and the cosine squared of v plus the sine squared of v is 1. That simplifies 2. The square root of 2 minus 2 cosine u cosine v minus 2 sine u sine v. Looking at the right-hand side now, I get the square root of cosine squared u minus v minus 2 cosine u minus v plus 1 plus sine squared u minus v. And remember that the cosine squared of something plus the sine squared of that same thing is 1. This simplifies to 2 minus 2 cosine of u minus v because we already had a 1 in there. Now I'm going to equate the two of those and square both sides so that the radicals go away. 2 minus 2 cosine u cosine v minus 2 sine u sine v is equal to 2 minus 2 cosine u minus v. Both sides have a 2 in common. I can subtract that away. And they are all a multiple of 2. So I can actually divide through by a 2. But they're all also negative. So I'm going to divide through by a negative 2 on all of this. 
that's going to leave me with the 2 minus 2 cancels to 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. That leaves me with cosine of u, cosine of v. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, so that becomes a positive sine of u, sine of v. Equal to the 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. That's cosine of u minus v. Now if I have the cosine of one angle minus another angle, that's the same thing as cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Each of the other formulas can be derived in the same way. Here are formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Notice that for the sine formulas, it's sine and cosine mixed when they're multiplying towards each other. In the cosine formulas, you have cosines together and sines together. And in the sine formulas, when you have a positive for sine, you have a positive in the middle. When you have a minus for sine, you have a minus in the middle. But for cosine, it's the opposite. Okay. This can be used if we wanted to find, say, the sine of 75. We don't have 75 on the unit circle, but the sine of 75 degrees is the same thing as the sine of 30 plus the sine of 45 degrees, and both of those values are on the unit circle. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, and the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. That's the same thing as 1 plus root 2 over 2. Now remember we had cofunction identities where the sine of theta was equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, and the cosine of theta was equal to sine of pi over 2 minus theta. And we had cofunction identities for sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant. We can verify these identities using the sum and difference formulas. The cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, that's the same thing as u being pi over 2 and v being theta. So if we have the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta using the cosine difference formula. The cosine difference formula says cosine of u minus v is equal to the cosine of u times the cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. That tells me I have the cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of theta plus the sine of pi over 2 times the sine of theta. Well, the cosine of pi over 2 is the x value at pi over 2, which is 0. So I have 0 times the cosine of theta plus the sine of pi over 2 is the y value at pi over 2, which is 1. So that's 1 times the sine of theta, that just leaves me with the sine of theta. So that's verifying that cofunction identity.